Good morning. Welcome to First Baptist Church Cloudcroft. We are so glad that you're here today. My name is Angelo. I'm the worship leader. Whether you're joining us online or whether you're here in the sanctuary or I don't even know if there's folks in the overflow, um, we're just glad that you're here today. Um, wanted to let you know, if you're a visitor with us today, make sure you stop by, see me um, after the service. I'd love to get a chance to meet you and get a chance to talk with you and uh, just kind of get to know your story. Um, I also wanted to let you guys know that next week is communion. So um, be prepared if you're joining us online uh, with the elements at home. And if you want to, you're welcome to come by the church, uh, pick up uh, the elements that we have here. Um, if you're in the sanctuary, of course, we'll distribute those as well. I wanted to <coughs> excuse me, remind you that um, we have our text line set up. We know we've been uh, kind of promoting this, and we're getting an awful lot of prayer requests and things. So uh, please keep those coming. You can uh, send your prayer requests to 575-205-4740. And if you put in prayer, um, we can pray for you. You can put in prayer team if you're interested in joining the prayer team or serve. If you want to um, serve in any capacity on the worship team and on our tech team, we're always in need of folks who are willing and ready to come in and do those kinds of things. So uh, so before we get into this today, you may notice I'm, I'm standing up here in a Cleveland Browns jersey. <laughs> we are a football house. Uh, so uh, if you don't know the story, the Browns haven't been to the playoffs in 17 years. That's longer than my kids weren't even born the last time they were in the <laughs> playoffs. I'm from the Cleveland area. And so uh, for that to happen today is fantastic. Unfortunately, we're playing the Kansas City Chiefs who are favored to win the Super Bowl. So we're going to need some divine intervention and a lot of prayer. So text <laughs> prayer to that number. <laughs> you may not know this, but my wife in the back, uh, we met in Tampa, and she's a big Tampa Bay fan. So just like, uh, well, not as bad as the Browns, but they've had a 10-year drought, and they're in the playoffs and doing well also because they have Tom Brady. So I'm not jealous. I, I need a little therapy, but I'm not jealous. Uh, so <laughs> if they do make it to the Super Bowl, both teams, there may we may have trouble with uh, being of one accord in our house. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. So uh, anyway, uh, would you all just stand with us today as, as we welcome the Holy Spirit in this place? And uh, let's get into the worship. Sing 
So this week I was, uh, as I'm continuing my journey back into the news, I, I ran across this uh, survey, and it says that uh, not just in America but worldwide, the people are starting to lose trust in things. They're starting to lose trust in politics and politicians and um, the media and businesses, although not to quite the same extent. But the one that really got me was th we're also starting to lose trust in social media. And so what that kind of speaks to is the fact that we're having difficulty trusting each other out there in the world. And when you can't trust, that leads into things like anxiety and fear and anger <coughs> and those kinds of things. And I want to remind you that in Revelation 21, 5, you can read that, it says at the very end of the Bible, these words are trustworthy and true. So based on that, I would encourage every single one of you to go out and get into the Word of God every single day because it's, if it's difficult to trust our institutions in ourselves, it's not difficult to trust the Word of God. It's reliable, Hallelujah. and you can, you can get into it every single day, and it'll take that anxiety and that fear and all that stuff right out of your lives. So Amen. keep that in mind. Let's continue worshiping.
let's give it up for Jesus one time. Can we do that? I know we're Baptists, but I think we can go ahead and do that. Amen. Don't tell Larry.
Hey guys, I am so glad that you are here. Glad you're able to join us together in worship this morning. Whether you're here in the sanctuary, whether you're in the overflow or our far overflow, FBC Clock as we like to call it, or whether you're joining us online, we're glad that you could worship together with us this morning. There's something I would like, to, like for you to do, especially if this is your first time with us. I'd like for you to get your cell phones out. And if this is your first time, um, text to this number. The number is 575-205-4740, 575-205-4740, and text the word welcome. That's all you need to do. Hit enter. It'll give you some information. Be sure and fill out that little form. The reason we do that is because we want to connect with you, especially in this digital age. We, we can't see if you're online uh, joining us, uh, worshiping together uh, in our live stream. Uh, but if you'll do that, then we can connect with you. We want to get to know you uh, in, in these days ahead. So if you'll do that, I really appreciate that. We're in a series entitled Coffee Mug Christianity. And, and I, if you know me any at all, you know I love coffee. And so I, I, I've been trying to find coffee mugs uh, to, to show you every week. I, this is my third one, I, I think, so far. And, and God pre- kind of provided this way cool. Uh, my birthday was last Saturday, but on Monday, give a shout out to the WMU of our Mountain Valley Baptist Association. Uh, they, they showed up here with a whole group of people. They sang happy birthday to me. They, they had a basket that was like this. Man, it was a, it was a giant basket. And, and I was so overwhelmed, that was so great of them to do that. And, and I didn't unpack it uh, until just a, a couple of days later. And, and I found this coffee mug, and this coffee mug says this. You probably can't see that from where you are. But it says, serve with a heart like Jesus. And then on the back, it says, serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, Joshua 22.5. So I like that. Uh, it's a little bit small, but that's okay. That means I can drink espresso uh, from this one. Coffee mug Christianity, the idea behind the series is this, is that there are some, there are some uh, verses that we hear so much that they just kind of become cliche for us. And, and, and our faith doesn't need to stop at the coffee mug. It needs to go beyond that. And, and we don't want our faith to become cliche. So this morning, I, I want us to, to look at a, at a passage, two verses, that, that we probably have memorized. I memorized this as a teenager when I was a brand new believer and we memorize it, and it's an amazing verse, but we tend to just kind of let it become cliche. Let me read it for you. This is Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. And it says this, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. And, and we read that, and we say, man, that's great. We are saved by grace. Through faith, not of works. And and I don't know about you, but I'm really glad because I can't work for my salvation. None of us can. I would mess it up. I don't have to. My salvation is by grace. Jesus did the work on the cross for me. And and that is a truth we, we have to hang on to. That's why I memorized the verse as a teenager. But, if we're not careful, that, that verse kind of becomes cliche to us. And we're saved by grace, not, ooh, I don't have to work. There's no work. Jesus did all the work on the cross. There's none left for me to do. And that's absolutely true as far as our salvation goes. But, but sometimes we think that that means we don't work at all. If we would just read one more verse, verse 10, Ephesians 2, 8, 9 We've got, but if we would add verse 10 to that, this is what verse 10 says. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. You see, here's the big idea today. Salvation should lead to service. We, we, we tend to think, but because of this verse, because we've heard it so much, and, and, and it becomes kind of cliche to us that, that I don't have to work. Jesus did all the work. There's no work left for me. And, and, and for our salvation, that's absolutely true. But listen, because of our salvation, we should serve. Salvation should lead to service. Paul says this in, in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. 
He says, I appeal to you. That word is beg. I beg you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. And that's in the English Standard Version, and, and that's a really good version, but I cut my teeth on the New American Standard Bible, the NASB, and, and that one phrases it a little differently. Here's what it says. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Now, now, why would that translation say spiritual service of worship? Well, let's unpack those two words. In the ESV, it says, which is your spiritual worship. And, and, and when, we, when we hear that, when we see that, we think, oh, man, that's great. And, and if you know me at all, or if you walk in on me sometime when I, I'm in the sanctuary by myself, I've probably got the worship music blaring, and, and, and I'm worshiping. And, and when we hear the word spiritual worship, we think, you know, that, that close your eyes and, and raise your hands and, and worship God with our spirit. And we're absolutely called to do that. But that's not what this passage is talking about. The word spiritual here means reasonable or logical. That's a little bit different, isn't it? Which is your reasonable worship or your logical worship is, is the way that it would read. And then the second word there, worship, actually means divine service. What we get from that is that's our service to God. So, so with that in mind, we could paraphrase that passage and read it this way. In light of what God has done for you, it is only reasonable that you should respond in service to him. The, the way I would put it is, because God loved us the way he did... Isn't it only reasonable that we should serve him? For God loved the world like this. He gave his only son to die on the cross. The, the one who knew no sin became our sin so that, that we could be the righteousness of God in him. Because of that, it's only reasonable that we serve him. Philippians chapter 2 Verse 12 and 16, Paul says this, So then, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without grumbling or disputing, so that you will prove yourselves to be blameless and innocent, children of God above reproach in a world of crooked and perverse generation among whom you appear as lights to the world. Listen, I, I think in the days ahead, uh, if, we just, if we just be obedient to God, that, that we're going to appear even more than ever as lights in a dark generation. Holding fast the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I will have reason to glory, because I did not run in vain or toil in vain. I, I like the way Paul puts that. Paul says, work out your salvation. We don't work for our salvation, but we work from our salvation. You, you get that? So we don't work for it. Jesus did that work. But because we are saved, we work from our salvation. Paul says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You remember, salvation leads to service. Because we are saved... We serve him. That, that we give our, our lives, sacrifice our, our bodies as living sacrifices to God, which is only reasonable in our service to him. Ephesians 2.10, for we are created for his workmanship. I'm sorry, let me back up. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We were created in Christ for good works. That, the, the phrase at the end sounds a little bit odd to us. It, it says that we should walk in them. That's not the way we talk normally um, outside of church. But, but that word walk, it, it, it's the Greek word peripateo. That sounds like hairy potato, doesn't it? It's not. Peripateo. 
It means to walk around. So peri, like in periscope, and, and pateo means to walk. So to walk around, here, here's the idea behind that, that we live out our salvation, that we, we put it into practice. And, and Paul says here that, that we, were, we were created for good works in Christ Jesus. For his workmanship, that, that's why he saved us. In, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20, Paul is, is talking here, and, and just full disclosure, if you back up a couple of verses and look, you'll find out at one point he says, flee from sexual immorality. Another point he's talking about abstaining from meat that was sacrificed to idols uh, because that would offend some. But the idea is still the same. The principle is the same. Here's what Paul says. Paul says, 1 Corinthians six nineteen, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, you are not your own. You are bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. I, I know what we think. Pastor, you, you're saying that we need, to, we need to serve God in the church. Well, I've got time for that. And man, I, I, barely, I barely am able to keep up with the stuff that I have to do already. And you're, you're asking me to add one more thing to my plate to make one more commitment that it's going to be hard for me to keep. Look back at what Paul said. Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? You are not your own. I, I know we think we are. I, I drive my truck. These are my clothes. I go to my house. This is my time. It's my calendar. These are my resources. Those are my talents. Paul reminds us in this passage that you don't belong to you anymore. You're not your own. You've been bought with a price. And, and I know that creates some tension in our lives. We, we, we give a little bit of pushback to that. We, we kind of don't like that. We said, no, we, we, we've been freed from sin. I, I'm not a slave anymore to sin. And that's absolutely 100% true. But we're going to serve somebody. You were freed from slavery to sin but you become a bond servant Christ you were created to serve the, the way Rick Warren put that is you were saved to serve you, you see you weren't saved to sit and soak you were saved to serve I know some of you are, are maybe a little bit uncomfortable right now especially in, in this day and time in our current uh, culture. In, in fact, some of you um, are, are probably thinking, I don't know how I can do that. I'm, I'm staying away from crowds to, to try to be careful to, to make sure that I, I stay healthy through all this COVID mess. Listen, used to be, used to be, that's a good Texas. Uh, the, the way that it used to be pre-COVID, if that's not a, a phrase, it is now, pre-COVID, we always thought that there was only one way that we could serve, and that's in the physical. And we still do that. Uh, we, we still need greeters. We, we still need uh, ushers. We, we still need to, for, to, to greet people as they come in, help them be seated. And In fact, we, we don't say this a whole lot, but, but you should know these are some things that we're doing because of COVID. Um, we, we have hand sanitizers at all the doors. So we need people to point that out as they come in so our, our greeters can do that. Uh, we, we have... Um, I like to call it first class seating. I love this setup. I don't think we're ever going to change uh, from this in, in, in our main sanctuary. Um, but but we, we are able to socially distance from one another. Uh, we need for people to help uh, greeters, ushers, to help people understand that, to help them be seated. If they're not comfortable in the main sanctuary, we have another overflow. Uh, we, we call it FBC Cloudcroft South in our fellowship hall. And then we have another overflow uh, that is almost never used for those who, who say, you know what, I, I, I want to come and, and I want to be here and I want to see people, but I, I don't want to sit where there are people around me. We, we need people to help us do that. We need people to, to, to wipe down the surfaces as people come through. We need, we need kids, people for our kids' ministry. We need people for our, our student ministry. You, there are many, many ways that you can serve physically, and when we need those, oh my, now in our digital age, uh, man, do we have 
uh, a, a lot of, of places for you to serve. We need somebody to run the camera. We need somebody to do the lives. We need somebody to do the live stream. Uh, if you're watching that, uh, we need somebody to do the sound. And our sound got a lot more complicated. In fact, we're going to need someone else to help do our live stream sound pretty soon. We need somebody to do our video, the PowerPoint and, and the, the videos that we show. We have lots of places for you to serve physically. And it used to be that that was the only way. And, and so for those of you who, who, are, who are staying home, who are staying away from crowds, you're thinking, I can't do any of that. Guess what? There's now another way that you can serve, and that's digitally. We have our physical way that we can serve, and we have our digital ways that we can serve. And in that, I'll, I'll just give kudos to, to Jack uh, Pickle. He, he is our host, our online host. If, if you're watching us through the live stream, uh, most likely, Jack, you've seen him post on there, and he greets people just like you would here, only he's doing that online. And, and in fact, this, this is way cool. Um, Hope, my, my daughter, is, is our social media director. Um, Hope, if you're watching, don't get excited. It's a volunteer position. But, but she, she's getting ready to go off to college. In, in fact, there's probably something you didn't know. If you're watching on live stream, there's no way you would know this. You're here uh, in the sanctuary. You, you might have figured it out by now. But I'm not here. I mean, I mean, I'm here, but I'm not here. Does that make sense? Because one of the things that we're doing this year is we are rethinking everything. And, and one of the ways that we do that is by thinking of digital as the same as physical. You see, I'm actually taking Hope back to school. She gets to go back to live on campus and, and go to Eastern this year or this semester in person uh, in some of her classes. And even though she's going there, she can still serve as our social media director and Instagram and Facebook, helping us get all those things out there. And, and, and we need more people to help with that. She's the director, but she needs people to help. There's some great ways you might have never thought of, uh, but we need people to jump in and, and help with that. And, and then She's going to be able to, to do that because she's going to be engaging. She's going to be uh, worshiping together with us from three and a half hours away. She's going to be able to help Jack. She'll come online with Jack and, and be just another host, a hostess in her case, and, and greet people as they come on. And, and, and we need that not only in our live stream. We, we do uh, Java and Jesus on Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays at 8 uh, every week, except uh, uh, occasionally we'll, we'll miss a time, but... We need that. There, there are so many ways that you can serve in the digital realm. We, we have a prayer team. Uh, in, in fact, if you need prayer, that, that same number we keep throwing out for everything, 575-205-4740, just type, just send a text to that one called prayer. And you know what? We, we have a team of people that aren't here, but they will pray for you. Uh, physical, we have people in our prayer team that'll come if, if you come down and, and we're working really hard to, to improve our online uh, uh, platform for our worship services so that hopefully uh, very soon you will be able to request prayer and, and someone can pray with you privately. You can kind of move offline, but, but you'll still be digitally connected and they can pray for you in real time. You can serve. But because, you see, the big idea is this, that salvation should lead to service. Because of what God has done for us, we are not our own. We've been bought with a price, and, and we belong to Him. And, and, and we should seek, I, I love the way Paul says it at the end of, of that passage in 1 Corinthians. He says, so glorify God in your body. Serve Him is kind of the, the impetus of that. I'm going to issue a challenge. I want to challenge you today with this question. Are you serving? Are you? Are you serving somewhere? And, and up until now, if you're, only, if you're engaging, I shouldn't say only, but, but if you're engaging with us online, you might be thinking, I, I've never, I haven't been able to do that. With, well, now you can. There are ways, are you serving? If not, let me challenge you to do that, to, to take that next step. Whether, whether you're able to serve physically here on campus or whether you're able to serve us in the digital realm, whether in our online streaming, there's a bunch of things that you can do otherwise. 
I want to challenge you to do this. If you're not serving somewhere in the life of FBC Cloudcroft today, whether you're here, you're in Abilene, whether you're in Portales, I don't care where you are. If you're engaging with us and you're not serving, let me challenge you to do this. That, that same number, take, take out your phone here. I'll get mine out with you. So you get your phone and you open up your text messaging and you put in this number, 575-205-4740. 575-205-4740. It's on the screen. And you text the word serve. Now don't put the parentheses or the quotes in there. That, that, that won't work. Just the word serve. You text the word serve to that number. And then it'll ask you, you need to fill out just a little bit of form. It's going to want your name and your number and your email address. And then you need to put in there physical or digital, whichever way you're able to serve, physical or digital. But, but I want to challenge you to do that. Because if you're not serving somewhere, you should. Not to gain our salvation, but because we're saved. Because of what Christ has done for us, we should serve. We were saved to serve. Salvation leads to service. And, and for, for those of you, there's some of you who are saying, you know what, I don't, I don't do text. I don't know how to do that. That's right, we, we, we've got you covered. You can go to fbccloudcroft.org. That's www.fbccloudcroft.org. And on that main page, one of those little things that slide across, those are called sliders. Wait for the one that says serve, and you click that button. It's going to take you to a form. Put your name, your phone number, your email address, and you put on there physical or digital. I challenge you to do that. that. That's one of the things that we expect of our members. We expect them to attend faithfully, whether it's physical or digital. We, we expect them to belong to a small group that meets regularly, whether it's physical or digital. And we expect them to commit to serve, whether it's physical or digital. Those are the ABCs. The S ABCs is to share, to commit to sharing your faith in Christ. We expect out of members that you're, you're serving somewhere, somehow, and now you can, whether it's physical or digital. So I want to challenge you to do that. You respond as I pray for you today. God, thank you for your love. Thank you for the way that you love us. And God, because of your love for us, Lord, we, we should want to serve you. And Lord, as members of the body of Christ, we, we are all necessary. We all have our individual functions that you've created us for. And God, would you give us the courage and the boldness to just step out today and say, God, I'm going to serve you. I don't know how I'm going to work that out with my calendar. I don't, know, I don't know how I'll work that out with my time or even my resources. I feel stretched already. But God, I know that's something that I need to do, and I'm going to commit to serve you today. Lord, would you give us the courage and the boldness to do that? And to step out in faith and then, Lord, walk in obedience. God, as we do that, would you bless that? Lord, would you take our service and, and would you multiply it? Would you, would you use it in a way that's going to bring you honor and glory? A, a, a way that, that, Lord, we would appear as lights in this dark generation. You would bring people to faith in Christ. We pray this. In the amazing name of Jesus, amen. Well, if you're able, if you're able, if you're able. <laughs> Has that ever happened to you? Has that ever happened to you? <laughs> if you're able, would you please stand with us as we continue in our response today? <laughs> that went right through my head. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. a hallelujah heaven comes to fight for me I raise a hallelujah 
that's a weapon that we're forming against evil. And that weapon will stand conquered. Sing a little louder. Um, I just want to remind everybody that uh, you can give online your tithes and offerings at fbccloudcroft.org forward slash give. We also have receptacles at both sides of the sanctuary. Let me, play, uh, let me pray for those tithes and offerings now. Father God, thank you so much for um, the options and the abilities to serve you. We have a, a, a way to praise you with our, our voice. We have a way to praise you with our finances. We have a way to praise you with serving. And I pray that you touch every believer's heart. Uh, make this the opportunity that it is. Be clear about that and what we can do for your kingdom. Um, please accept these uh, tithes and offerings on our behalf today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us not lift our 
clean hands, give us pure hearts, let us not lift our souls to another, give us clean hands, give us pure hearts, let us not lift our souls to another. Oh God, let us be a generation that sees, seeks your face, oh God of Jacob. Oh God, let us be a generation that sees, seeks your face, oh God of Jacob. Just want to say thank you all for joining us today. I know we had a, a technical issue downstairs. Apologize for that, but you know what? That just ties into the fact that we need folks to come in and serve and help us out, and we want to do that safely, and we want to talk to you about that, and we want to move forward in the right direction because this is a great opportunity right through that camera right there to, to spread the gospel in a way that's never been done before. So I just pray uh, all of you t this week have a great week. Uh, go out there and just keep taking it to the world, keep praying, and be that light. God bless you all. Hope to see you next week. Give us clean hands. Give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Give us clean hands. Give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Oh God, let us be a generation that sees, seeks your face, oh God of Jacob. Oh God, let us be a generation that sees, seeks your